All right, guys, welcome back to the Swedish Disc Golf National Tour. The fourth stop and the final stop of the year. We are at beautiful Isa Meadows Disc Golf Course, and it's time for the back nine action. And with me, I have Elias and uh, Richard again, and we are excited to bring you these nine holes. Uh, what do you say about the, the first nine, Elias? First nine over, that's going to be the easiest nine holes we're going to play today, especially it's a windy day. So scoring is done and now it's time to survive. Yeah, it's time to survive in the in the winds to come. Uh, what do you have to say about this uh, nine holes that we're going to play now, Rikard? Yeah, it really shows in the stats for the round uh, that the, these are the nine most difficult holes. You have the six top six most difficult holes in the back nine. Wow, so they're up for a task, the players, and uh, Elias, you're one of them. Are you excited to watch yourself play? <laughs> Absolutely, especially since I feel like it always looks a little bit better on video than in person. So excited to see some hopefully good looking disc golf. <laughs> nice, for me it's the other way around. <laughs> uh, okay, so uh, as we said, we are at the, the beautiful course in uh, in uh, Österryd, it's called. It's just outside of Norrköping in, in Sweden. And uh, Eastern Meadows, we, we call the course, the, the disc golf course we're going to play on. Um, Simon, the guy uh, doing doing most of the work behind the scenes of this course is, uh, is a solid solid dude. And uh, we are excited to bring him this, uh, this action to showcase his uh, beautiful property uh, supported by the uh, Österryds IF, which is the which is the um, uh, the club where where this course is uh, is uh, located, and uh, the back nine, as you said earlier, Elias is uh, more open, and today especially more windy, so it's going to be very interesting. Uh, so, do we have a leaderboard to look at? Maybe. Here we go. What do we see here, Elias? I'm not the outright leader anymore, but rather tied with Gustav Dalen. Both of us played. Okay, honestly, not great front nines, but Arvid Hansson, he played very well, five under, many great birdies, even with one bogey. Andreas Stam, also making moves from a card below us, so we have some uh, interesting stuff on the back. Though I'd still say that it should be a lead card winner here, as we're all three kind of close. And of course, looking over the players again, that was me first. Then Gustav Dalen, a very familiar player to a lot of Swedish disc golfers. But if you're not familiar with him, great putter. That's what he's known for mostly. Good forehand, good backhand, all round solid player. And uh, here is Arvid Hansson, who we saw through almost exclusively backhand or exclusively backhand, right? Yeah, I think so. I think so. And uh, Simon here, or Simon Kapling, I would say he's uh, um, back and dominant, but he still still throws uh, some good forehands as well. Um, and this approach game is quite solid as well. He's an all-round player. Um, and now we're heading to one of the more difficult holes, Elias. Absolutely. I'd say personally, probably the most difficult hole. So hole 10, it's a par 4. 215 meters, though off the tee it's very far downhill, so you can easily get about 130 meters uh, off the tee if you can just hit your line. It's most likely a forehand downwards with a uh, right finish, or you can go for a backhand turnover. And then on the second shot, a lot of the times you really can't get to the perfect spot, so then you're just scrambling. The ideal shot for the second shot is going to be a backhand turnover, but of course, that requires you to be in the perfect spot. And as I said, quite rare to see somebody in the perfect spot of the tee. I agree. And we see Ar uh, Arvid still going with back and here. A little bit kick to the left there, if I saw it correctly. Uh, hopefully, it has something to work with there. And this is a forehand throw for you, or is it a backhand? Looks like a backhand. Yeah, backhand, same understable mid-range as I threw on hole number six. So I'm really comfortable with the gap with the backhand. But we did have some headwind here, so I just didn't put enough hyzer on that understable mid-range. Still actually an okay spot. On this hole, if you can just make your way down there, 
down the hill, that's usually going to be just fine. And I'm not sad about where I am. I guess this might be one of the holes on the property where you kind of find with getting the par uh, because it's a really tough birdie to get. Yeah, yeah, definitely. How does the how's the scoring average here, Ricard? Yeah, this is actually just the second most difficult uh, hole for this round, but definitely the least amount of birdies. Only 2%, which is one player out of 66, uh, managed to get the birdie. Yeah, that's a great statistic. And even though, like, I guess technically now we know that not everybody on the card is going to birdie the hole i think that was pretty obvious from the beginning this is not a hole that you really see almost any birdies on as as you as you just said and gustav definitely not going to be birding this hole from here this is also one of the holes where you can see um if you played this course before or maybe watched uh, earlier coverage from this uh, property you've seen the maiden amazing job with the fairway on this one uh, this is totally different from how it looked just one year ago or more uh they really done an amazing job with you know leveling out the the ground and adding on some soil and and putting out putting down the grass there looks looks really beautiful So this is Arvid, he was on the left side of the fairway, so he was just trying to make his way still down the hill. And anything on the grass here is going to be usually good and on the fairway. And Gustav, pretty much no chance to reach the basket, just trying to pitch around the corner. From this camera angle, it's a right bending shot. So his, his shape was actually good, but he's just still way short of the basket. Yeah, seeing a few standstills here, which is quite common from the rough or the semi-rough. These guys are standing and you as well, just on the edge of the fairway there. And yeah, so I'm on the right side of the fairway. So this is making the turn to the right even more severe. I'm going with a neutral mid-range, trying to put a nice turn over there. But I was scared of fading off to the left side wood, so I put too much angle on it. And now I will have an easy pitch up for par, which is fine on this hole. But I really would have loved to have a putt for birdie from such a good position of the tee. You can barely see him in the green shirt there, but it, I can promise you that's Arvid throwing from the bushes. Green leaves, green shirt, green discs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and a green fairway. Pretty touchy approach here. I think it's easy to go a bit too far if you just put too much energy on the disc. And really not too bad there from out of it, just six meters. And at this basket, for some reason, even though it should be pretty windy, I think we got a nice little lull in the wind. So it wasn't like super windy when we were putting on this hole. So this is just the jump putt for me, trying to get into the circle. Actually not a great release, had a lot of wobble out of the hand, so I'm still left with a bit of a putt, just about 5 meters. You're also facing headwind. How do you feel about that usually? Yeah, very true, I don't, I don't love headwind putts. And the miss here from Simon actually, to be left side of the basket is a good miss since now he has that tailwind, and nice to see him drop in a good putt for a five on this hole, which obviously you don't want to take a bogey, but as Rikard mentioned, second hardest hole on the course. It's probably a good hole to take that bogey if you have to take it somewhere. And we see two bogeys so far, and 
you and Gustav have no chance at this point at making the birdie. So let's do a shout out to Marcus Malm with the only birdie for the day. Not bad, not bad. Congratulations. There we go. Moving on to the open holes. Every hole from now on is going to be more or less open. There's a, still a couple of wooded holes, but this hole 11 fully open for about 90% of the flight. Uh, the only thing that is making you shape a shot here is the right side trees. So you have hole left side open. You can go for a forehand hyzer, turnover, straight shot. Only thing you can't really do is a backhand hyzer. And to note here, there is a massive wind, uh, probably from left to right, but we actually weren't that sure about where the wind was coming from. It was very swirly, and I put some uh, extra hyzer on my disc to just stay safe. There's the OB left, so you'd rather be a little bit right than left here. I guess it technically OB right as well, but it, it doesn't come in as fast as the one on the left-hand side. Now let's see what happened here. That's the weird, that's a weird flight. Yeah, very weird. I, I feel like we could play a little fun game here where our viewers maybe could try and guess what the wind was doing to that disc and judging by the flight, what was the wind direction? Because none of us could really figure it out. <laughs> that looks really, really strange. Hopefully we get some answers in the comments here. <laughs> And this is making me a little bit nervous uh, that Gustav is going for the forehand, not as a competitor, but just knowing that the wind is doing all sorts of things. But he actually gets a great flight, just flat, piercing through the wind. Very impressive shot. Yeah, and I think the key there was also keeping it fairly low, staying out of the wind. Uh, and as you said, flat and probably very overstable disc as well. Solid, nice approach, approach there, having the tap in bogey then, I guess, because of the OB. Solid layup. That's what we're going to see a lot of on this back nine. Not many, I'd say, 20 or even 15 or more meter putts are going to be ran in the wind that we have. Probably a lot of action from the tee, though, as we've already seen. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And that's tough miss from Gustav. I, I think that's a great point that you're bringing up. I think in this condition, it's important that you you are aggressive from the tee, but even more aggressive on the approaches. You really want to get the disc as close as possible so that you don't have to make long putts in the wind. Yeah, makes sense, makes sense. And uh, all experienced players here, so I think they're used to the wind and, and kind of know the game plan here. So it'll be interesting to see what happens here on the next hole, hole 12. Yeah, hole 12, par 5. Uh, it's a very interesting hole because as a par 5, it's pretty easy actually. And the wind is favorable. We have a tailwind here. So you want to throw something as far as you can off the tee while staying rather was the left side of the fairway than the right. So there's only one tree in the middle to miss off the tee. Want to get around the mando on the second shot, ideally with a forehand, and then just pitch up to the basket. After two good shots, you usually have about 60 or 70 meters to go. And this is me just trying to get it as far as possible. Solid shot, but, you know, not quite as far left as you'd like to be. And with the, this kind of whole distance is key, or at least making it a lot easier, right? Yeah, distance helps for sure. Though the second shot is so simple on this hole that it doesn't really matter if you're 100 meters up there or 120. But of course, the second shot is, is much more manageable if you're further. In different conditions, uh, would you... Uh, would you 
consider going for the eagle here? Think it's Absolutely. Possible. Actually, in, in round two that was played earlier this morning, I was trying to go for the eagle, getting to about 30 meters. And I'd say that this hole for the big arms is definitely eagle wall. If you can get just far enough left of the tee, and then you can have a big turnover shot to the green. But that's uh, in the wind, that's pretty much just dreaming. Yeah, I guess it's uh, it's key to get uh, left and far to to be able to manage the, the big mando tree on the right there for the second shot. Yeah, definitely. You can see Gustav caught some branches there, which made this a little bit shorter than he intended, but probably manageable still, even though he has the big boulder to to fight with there. Now this one is much more ideal. You can be a little bit long of the gap as he is, and he's gonna have some trees to contend with, but really no problem. Uh, even the even going too far of the gap, you have a lot of smaller gaps that you can easily hit uh, with uh, with just a putter or mid range shot. So my shot there definitely long off the gap, but still gonna have a chance for the birdie. Yeah, so this uh, this part here where we see out of it land is a quite common spot for for the second shots to land, I would say. And as you said, multiple gaps to choose from. And this was, even though on camera that looked like just a normal forehand, that was so impressive live. He was able to hit a very tight gap there. And Gustav is going to have a circle's edge putt for birdie after... Honestly, two not ideal shots. And I'm just going with an overstable approach disc here. Just trying to miss a couple trees and getting up there to seven meters. Very happy with that, especially since I did pull the shot a little bit to the right. Not bad at all. And we see Simon here going with the body once again, but nicks a tree and it's probably maybe inside circle two or maybe even shorter and as we take a look at Arvid's likely layup but potentially a run here actually a full run that's uh, courageous Rickard, how was this hole playing as an average? I think it's interesting since it's an easier par 5 but with a lot of wind. It's actually right there in the middle, the place that like uh, the 10th most difficult hole for this round. Um, averaging 5.08, <laughs> so basically par. And also one of the, the holes with a big facelift for the last year here uh, especially this uh, third part of the the hole uh which, where they cleaned up really nice here you go that's a great putt it was way closer than i thought but still solid solid shooting there from from coupling one of the uh, two the great disc golfing brothers It looks like that's a common thing in Sweden, having the, the brothers. Also, Gustav Dalen and Philip Dalen being, I'd say, maybe number one uh, of brothers in Sweden. Yeah, yeah. Th these mm. days, I, you're probably right. Challenged by young brothers, Arvid and the Holger Håkansson, of course. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Um, and Elias is still top of the field here, and now has two strokes before Gustav, as we just talked about. And then it's very tight for the third place at the moment. Arvid, Andreas, and Yusuf are all on 11 down for the tournament. And now for a short one, hole 13, Elias. 
13, great hole for a high overstable forehand. You want to throw either an overstable mid-range or maybe even more ideally an overstable fairway driver. The wind here is going to be left to right, so the turn to the right at the very end is uh, very severe, but with the help of the left to right wind, if you just throw that overstable fairway very high through the gap, you should be up there for a putt. This is also one of the fairways that wasn't green at all last year. This is all from 2024, this grass. Yep, really makes the hole look a lot more different than it was before. When it was just soil and branches covering the ground, so... Looks really, really nice. couple of different shots there. I went with the higher line that I personally think is better if you want to park the hole. Gustav kind of going in between mine and Simon's shot and a little bit long there. Good putt for the birdie there. You know, it's, it's a hole that you really don't want to miss. You want to have at least a putt here. Yeah, especially being the back nine, this is uh, one of the easier holes. Uh, and you can see that the uh, back nine has started off quite tough for the, for the group here. Uh, only Elias having the, the one birdie thus far, for the first three holes, so... Good line, just a little, little bit short. Yep, and let's see out of it with a spin putt. Nose up there, as you can see, the right to left wind from his angle, just picking up the putter. And Gustav, he's two strokes back. Important putt to make, I'm closer than him. And that's good work. Yeah, that's a good conversion. Tough comebacker here for... Mr. Hanson. Close, but no cigar. And I guess the wind didn't help him there, having the Heiser into the chains. chains. I'd say that we're getting pretty much to the windiest part of the round now. Uh, you know, hole 11, that was definitely a tough tough windy hole. This hole doesn't really get affected by the wind that much, but the next two holes were gonna have the strongest winds that we had all weekend, so keep your eyes open for the wind direction. You're gonna see some interesting flights of the disc in the next two holes. Yeah, the problem is that the next hole is gonna be a little bit left to right, and the, the second to, to next one is gonna be more of a headwind, I, I'm guessing. Let's see how it plays out. Right on here on 14, it's a strong left to right wind. This hole is playing as an island, so you have to be inside of the logs to be able to play from the island. If you're outside of the logs, you're going to be OB and you have to go to a drop zone about 20 meters away. And extremely strong left to right wind. So everybody is trying to play inside with an overstable driver. And a terrible shot for me, hitting the first tree, not even giving it a chance. And Gustav is really close to getting that in bounds, but yeah, as you said, the wind really pushed it down and it didn't really have the energy to heise her into the to the island there. Looks really, really tough, this one. And similar thing here, unfortunately. Just almost impossible to get it far enough to the left. I think the best shot here really would be almost an overstable distance driver thrown pretty soft so that you can have the fight to the left. Very similar result for, for Arvid as well. 
Yes, yeah, so four shots from the drop zone. And how many meters are we here, Elias, approximately? Uh, 20, I'd say maybe 22, 23. And I'm I'm actually jump putting with an overstable mid range there, just because there's still that very strong left to right wind, and I don't want to risk turning it over to the right. Gustav much more comfortable with a flat spin, going with his normal putting putter. Yeah, but you can kind of see he had a little bit more left release than he usually has, I think. Ooh, that was a solid run. Closes up the bunch. Yeah, really, you know, not much to talk about here. It's just it's just a tough hole in this wind. Almost impossible to get to the island. I feel like in no wind it would be one of the easier holes on the back nine as it's pretty short and the island is pretty big on the left side. Yeah, I guess it's uh, very much a birdie bogey hole at this point. Especially bogey hole. <laughs> All right, toughest wind of the round coming up here on hole number 15, par five. Once again, not a long par five, but we're playing into a ripping headwind. So 278, probably playing closer to honestly 400 meters in the headwind that we have right now. You want to play first shot in bounce, second shot in bounce. And then if you have gotten enough distance of those first two, you can maybe think about going for the birdie. But in this wind, the par is going to be just fine. And I'm I'm taking my most overstable distance driver. Try to put it low and some good hyzer on it. Yeah, it looks like you landed in one of those uh, safe peninsulas, so to speak, on the fairway. I guess that's where you're aiming for to have the bigger fairway to work with. Absolutely, yeah. You have a bit of a landing zone out there to the left. And you can see Gustav putting even more hyzer on the disc. I think he expected more flip up from the headwind. He's going to be OB left there. I know he was kind of struggling with the fact that he felt like he didn't have an overstable enough driver in the bag, which honestly makes this hole just impossible to play. Oh, just barely trickles OB there. Yeah, it's really scary with this uh, kind of wind. Do you really need to trust your discs? It's almost against kind of you, you, you will and you, your nature to to throw that hard into a headwind. We saw Arvid uh, landing in the middle of the fairway, which is very impressive here. This is the most difficult uh, hole played for, for this round with an average of 6.37. Yeah, almost uh, 0.5 strokes over par. That's that's a lot. And as you said, Elias is probably solely because of the wind, I guess. Yeah. Arvid here, he went with the same disc twice uh, and he's saying that he will actually throw the same disc three times here. So that's his overstable distance driver showing off how long this hole is playing, going three shots with a distance driver and still well under 300 meters. I'm doing the same, same very overstable distance driver. That's actually a good spot for birdie, so I'm, I'm very happy with where I am right now. And the green position here is a little bit on the right-hand side, uh, fairly close to the OB, OB right. Um, how do you prefer to, to play it into this green, Elias? I think the best approach is going to be, doesn't really matter if it's forehand or backhand, but just throw something very overstable and throw it low. 
So I think the the low low part is most important. As Simon just flashing the chains, and let's see out of it here once again going with the same distance driver. Wow! Yeah, he <laughs> knows his discs. That was very solid play. Let's see that again. That's insane to be able to trust the hyzer release, trust the turn, and still trust the hyzer back. Such a touchy shot, and he said he threw it with absolutely full power. Yeah, and that was uh, incredible, and, and glad to see his reaction as well. Yeah, he was definitely just happy to be around. I, he he uh, gave the vibe that he wasn't really expecting to be on the lead card, so I think he was just happy to be there for the experience, even though he has kind of slipped out out of contention for the win. Yeah, both him and uh, Simon Kapling has had a little bit tougher round going on, but solid shooting throughout the weekend, of course, and that's a nice approach from Gustav. Once again, in my hand is this overstable approach disc. Just trying to make a soft bid. Honestly, not a great bid, but I'm fine with the par here. Yeah, hard to be closer to the pin at least. <laughs> and Simon had uh, four shots, but two OP strokes, right? Yeah, now yeah. We impressive. One of the rare birdies on this hole, one of four. Yeah, that's uh, that's not bad. Twenty-five percent right there. Good job out of it. And uh, we see he's uh, solo third now because of that, and uh, still in front. Elias himself, seventeen down, uh, followed by Gustav, and then we have Yusef, which is uh, tied for the hot round with Elias on three down at the moment. And it looks like the the scores are getting. Uh, tougher and tougher because of the the tougher back nine here but it's uh, still nice to see some great golf on on a very fun course to watch and we're moving on to hole number 16. a couple of choices here you can go through the route that the drone is flying but the more common route is going to be either a flex forehand to the left or just a straight to right turning backhand to the left so there's a nice left side gap off the tee and then on the approach, if you make it to the sweet spot, the approach, I'd say, is the easier part. It's from the sweet spot, it's just a 80 or 70 meter overstable approach disc, but getting there is no easy task. And on this hole, you can sometimes see people going really, really long on the big one, um, or on the first shot, I should say. Uh, maybe it's more difficult today because I guess the headwinds kind of sneaks up on you uh, a little bit later during this hole. And also there is an OB on the right side uh, of the fairway. Actually, now that I'm watching the coverage, I remember that I wasn't supposed to be throwing a forehand here, but I remember Gustav in round two made the forehand look so nice and so easy that I decided maybe I should actually go for that shot. And so Gustav here, he's showing the, the real forehand line and mine was just a copy of what he was trying to do in round two. All right. It's always nice to be adaptive in that way to pick up some tips from your uh, fellow card mates and uh, sometimes even uh, go against your game plan. But uh, I think I think I think that shows for for a good good player and uh, Gustav just in bounce there. I think he's happy with that and decent angle to towards the green. Yeah, really everybody in a in a pretty good spot. Even Simon with a tree hit there, not quite satisfied with hitting the tree, but he's gonna be fine and. Out of it, yeah, he's the, he's the only one scrambling here. But this hole is not that far for being a par 4, though, so scrambling for par is still very much possible from here. Oh. 
Yeah, that should be like a long putt, I think, for Arvid. So Simon here, a bit of a flex shot to reach the basket, if that's what he's wanting to do. And yeah, clearly trying to get there just a little bit short on the fade. And actually one, one nice little side story here. I don't know if you can see the tears in my eyes right now, but we were watching the live stream from the PDJ Pro Worlds. And this hole was exactly the moment when Evelina Salonen tapped in for her first world championship title and also with the first Finnish world championship title in a in a singles format in the pro uh, FPO or MPO so that was great to see and we all as a card we watched a bit of the live on the teapad wow nice yeah big congratulations of course Okay, yeah, it was uh, was a bit further back than I originally thought. Hopefully, it can go up and down from here. Yep, nice shot. And Gustav here. So he's putting for birdie. I'm also putting for birdie. From 15 meters out. <laughs> Crazy make in the wind as well. The sniper's back. Look at the line, perfectly dead straight. Yeah, it's the same same height all the way. Yeah, so much control on those spin putts. And remember, he has a brother as well, a twin brother, so there are two of them. <laughs> Be aware. And speaking of brothers, we have to mention Linus Carlson and his brother Pelle as well. Pelle finishing just outside of top 10 in this com competition. Yeah, yeah, of course. Or as you said, Elias, a lot of a lot of uh, great disc golfing brothers in in Sweden and of course other countries as well. There we go. Solid putting. Looked very controlled. Even though the it's a windy green here as well. Yeah, I'm, I'm going with the pitch putt on this round. I was actually feeling super nervous on the putting. So after about hole, I think hole three, hole three or hole four, I didn't really want to go for my normal putt. So I'm just kind of uh, doing the same sort of putt that Niklas Antila is doing from close distance. So just keep the arm pretty straight, just pitch it to the basket. And yeah. Yeah, much more tough to miss uh, left and right when you do it that way. Absolutely. And maybe Simon hopes that he would have done something similar as he got a couple extra putts on that hole. And we're moving on to hole number 17. Really the last hole where you can get big swings on this course, as there's a lot of OB and it's a long par 4. 225. Off the tee, it's going to be a big forehand shot, unless you're out of it, maybe a big backhand turnover. Want to get about 100 meters of distance, and that's going to leave you for another big forehand or a big backhand turnover once again. A little bit of blind area as well to land on here. Uh, sometimes it can roll a little bit towards the OB, but usually it's quite fine. It is played a little bit downhill as well on the first shot, as I remember. Yeah, yeah, you, you, you're right about that. Not much, though, I think, but a little bit, yes. Yeah, Lovely shot from Gustav. I feel like his, uh, his forehand was actually what impressed me the most in this round. You know, of course, he was putting solid, but I feel like he didn't really throw that many forehands that looked off at all. There was a rare forehand from out of it as well. Came up a little bit short, I think, but uh, I feel like the, the form looked quite nice. So he has a forehand in him. I 
think it's quite usual on this hole that you do a little bit shorter first and then go big on the second one if you want to get the birdie that is uh maybe today a lot of people play for the par because of the wind yeah i agree i think it's uh in this wind it was probably better to be a little bit safer off the tee and a little bit safer than that on the second shot as <laughs> out of it is is i'd say less than one meter than being ob right but uh, no harm there, so he's still going to have a good chance for par. And this forehand is playing so far. It's about 125 meters, flat ground, and really not that much push from the wind because it's a straight tailwind and not a left-right tailwind, which would, of course, help the forehand hyzer. Well, there's also OB surrounding the entire green as well, so it's... Uh... Important to really stay on point here. Do you play this a uh, little bit uh, less aggressive because uh, of your three-stroke lead? Uh, no, I was trying to reach the basket, but I just, I just left it short. I just didn't get great power on that shot. Same thing for Gustav. I think he was definitely trying to park the hole. But with the tailwind, it's kind of tricky to trust the disc sometimes. I feel like you'd obviously like to throw something more understable, but it's hard to trust that the tailwind is going to make it more stable like it usually does. Is it time for another laser beam, maybe? Ooh, he went for it. I like it. And he, of course, he has to. Yep, very close. Let's see. Simon made a couple of good putts already. But that's not one of them. And now I have a three-stroke lead. This putt, I really don't have to even run this. So I'm just trying to put like a soft effort to the basket. Hopefully, at least not go very much far past we also see you have uh, <laughs> <laughs> nice man yeah it's uh, solid to get those ones a little bit dead putt you could say maybe but man maybe that was the the nail in the coffin right there solid solid shooting ah tough spit semi spit i could say from uh, from out of it there Simon makes the par right. So there you go. Only one hole left to conclude this round. And it's a beautiful hole. One of the best holes on the course, I believe. Definitely one of the most satisfying holes to throw. You have this straight gap that the drone is flying through. You can throw a mid-range or a fairway driver through that gap. It's uh, both tailwind and downhill, so definitely playing much shorter than 130. The easier gap is going to be a forehand hyzer to the left. This is what I'm going to be taking. Gustav is probably going to be taking the same gap. With the forehand, it's it's a big gap and it's a very natural flat to hyzer shape. So really no risk on this hole if you go with the forehand. Either a birdie chance or an easy par. And a beautiful green as well with the little pyramid shape on it. Frames the basket really nice. Yeah, definitely another uh, showcase of the work that they have done on this course. It's definitely very well kept. Oh, wow, it's up on the pyramid with that shot. I think so. That was the perfect forehand. Not bad, let's look at it again. Kind of a flip up, Heiser. Just boom, towards the basket. Very solid shooting from Gustav. He's been using that disc a lot uh, during this round. Is that uh, Jakob Semrad 
Ballista Pro, maybe. The the one Gustav string. Yeah. I'm not sure, but I think he said it was a rive. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, it might be one of those silverlet uh, orbit rives or something like that. Nice to see one backhand here. I think the backhand flight is just so satisfying in this hole. Just look at this glide. Slide Anheuser through the gap. Tricky to control the landing, of course, but I think he's going to be fine with that. Yeah, it's nice to see the straight gap as well. Which is fairly common also when you don't have the, the big forehand. And the OB behind the basket here is not uh, really close to uh, to to the green. It's more there to protect the hole eleven, I guess, and the football pitch. Yeah, yeah, you're right on that. It's uh, I feel like it really rarely comes into play. And out of it here, he would love to finish making this putt. Also important to stay up on the leaderboard. And unfortunately, finishing over par, definitely his weakest round of the three rounds, but still some good showing. He had that great front nine. All the respect to him. And a solid birdie on the toughest hole of the day as well. Nice to see. And you can call me a chicken, but this is going to be another very much pitch slash dad putt coming don't want to have a comebacker. Uh, and also, I, I asked my caddy, Max Enstrom, who was filming there behind me, if I just should try to drop this in. He said yes, uh, but I didn't do it. <laughs> so that's going to be a par finish, unfortunately. Yeah, well, Max Enstrom being a local youngster from North Shopping. Yep, also a good up-and-comer. And, -comer, and uh, Gustav is going to try to get... Uh, Great finish here. There we go. Nice finish with a solid birdie and 16 down. Great shooting, Gustav Dalian. Well, well played, sir. And Simon, not his best uh, round, but uh, we're definitely going to see him again. He's a really great guy and a solid disc golfer. And Arvid, thank you again. But the man of the hour, Elias Lukunen. Tapping in his uh, par and his victory here in uh, Sweden and started. Nice to see Elias. How did that feel? Man, it, it felt very good. I hadn't won a single tournament this season and to win an eight year, uh, it, it felt amazing. And I loved our battle with Gustav. Even though neither of us played amazing in this final round, we still had a tight battle and. Uh, and yeah, more of those to come. Had one more at Lund Parken. Maybe that coverage might be coming out at some point as well. But yeah, that's the final leaderboard. What do you guys think? I looks uh, looks like a nice uh, field there, and we can see Yusuf Barry actually got the third place there, um, getting to to double digits also. So uh, three stroke win for Elias Lukunen and a solid, solid second place for Gustav Dalian. And I think Yusuf is quite happy with that second place, having a little bit of struggles with his his elbow the, the past year. Um, and uh, we see Arvid, the the guy from uh, Jönköping, having a solid finish on, uh, on fourth place there. I think he's very happy with that. And uh, yeah, it uh, has been very fun to watch, watch you guys play and uh, to see the, the course is developing year after year here in the Eastern Meadows. So it's been it's been a pleasure. What was your thoughts of the last round here, Richard? Yeah, I, I agree. <laughs> it's a beautiful course to watch and a fun course to, to uh, have coverage on as well. Yeah, kind of uh, uh, good diversity. You can see a lot of different holes, short, long, back and forehand, par fives, par fours, and so on. Um, and as we saw today, Elias, the wind really being a factor here uh, on the Öskötarsletta, as we say in, in Swedish, the, 
the meadows here in the eastern part of the southern Sweden. And um, really looking forward to, to doing this again sometime. Very Thank much you, guys. Thank you. Thank you very much.